listening to Tapped In, Buckham County's Half Hour to Empower on WRES 100.7 FM in Asheville. Listen up and get tapped into local important resources, information, and topics. Learn more about the topics of today's show at buncombecounty.org. Okay, it's time to get tapped in. Hello, 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 and greetings to all that are listening to my voice. It is that time to to get tapped in. And I'm one of your hosts, Zakia Bell Ryder. And I'm and Leonard Jones. Leonard Jones, and I come from the Communications and Public Engagement Department of Buncom County. We do, who do we have with us today, Leonard? <laughs> today we have Jake Egbert, who, sorry, and he is the Community Development Grant Manager with Planning Department of Buncom County Government. And he's gonna be here to talk to us about affordable housing. Ooh, welcome, Jake. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself so our listeners can know who they're listening to. Yeah, absolutely. So as Leonard said, I am from our Community Development Division. Um, I deal primarily with affordable housing, but our division has grown a bunch since I've been here for the past year and some change um, to include um, homelessness as a part of our work. So I've also been trying to help with that where I can and uh, primarily just dealing with affordable housing in our affordable housing services program grants. Okay, so you said the word affordable housing and that's what our topic is today in grants and all those great things. What, what does affordable housing mean? It's a great question. Um, and it can mean a lot of different things to affordable to different people. So affordable housing is something everyone needs. No one can live somewhere they can't afford. Mm -hmm. um, but in the government, when we talk about affordable housing, think of it as a noun where it is a specific type of housing available to people that the federal government defines as housing that does not cost more than 30% of an individual's mm -hmm. income. Um, and that would include utilities. So rent, utilities, mortgage utilities would not be more than 30% of a person's annual personal budget, right? Yeah. And their gross income. So that's sort of what we refer to as affordable housing. Mm -hmm. and, and we do understand that gross income is before removal of taxes. Exactly. And yeah. Um, so one of the questions is around um, what are what type of programs do we have for affordable housing and how are people eligible for those programs? Yeah, so the county is primarily a funder of affordable housing activities. And one thing t that's important to note is that a lot of these activities are targeted to help individuals and families at or below a certain income. Mm -hmm. So a lot of our services only help people below a certain income marker um, that we can discuss a little bit later. Mm -hmm. So our program at the county is a grant program and a loan program. So some of the loans would go to fund multifamily developments for affordable housing. So mm -hmm. apartment complexes that are income restricted um, for low to moderate income families. And the other half of that would be grants for activities that maybe provide people a pathway to home ownership, um, keep them in an existing home or keep them from being evicted through things like rental assistance. Um, emergency repairs will help keep people in home. And we also fund some down payment assistance grants as well to get people into home ownership. Yeah. And you said, you know, you have all these programs to, to get folks into these different places, but how can you determine like their median income? Like, because sometimes yeah. It feels like you have to be super poor to get these things, or super below yeah. these different lines. So how do you, how do we um, come up with that? Yeah, it's not as linear as anyone would like it mm -hmm. to be. It's a little more complicated. So the federal government every year has a area that we call the Asheville Metropolitan Area mm -hmm. that they deserve they determine a median income from, and from there they do some math, mm -hmm. and they say. This is the median income and housing services will start to become available to individuals and families at 80% of that. Mm -hmm. um, so this year, 80% AMI for a single person will probably be somewhere around 46,000 to 48,000, somewhere in that range. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but that's a lot of jobs. You know, mm -hmm. that's teachers, that is public safety, um, mm -hmm. there are a lot of jobs that don't, you wouldn't think are in need of affordable housing or would be eligible for affordable housing activities, but truly are. 
So it encompasses a large range of people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mentioned that Buckingham County is a funder. Um, who are some of the partners that Buckingham County partner with to help um, distribute some of these resources out into the community? Yeah, absolutely. So changes annually because the grant cycle is competitive. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone comes with a really strong multifamily development, we will partner with them. Um, in the past, we've collaborated with Mountain Housing Opportunities. They're a local nonprofit developer. Um, we have partnered with Asheville Area Habitat for Humanity on a variety of projects. Um, this year, we are working with organizations like Code Air Emma, mm -hmm. Elida Homes, Evelyn Charities, um, just uh, who, whatever nonprofits that can come together and provide great services to our community. We're really all about helping them. So. So I got another follow-up question. So we know that some of the housing developments have affordable housing, but often it's for an allotted period of time, five, mm -hmm. ten years, um, once the development up is running. Do the county have any control of that, or is that just part of the collaboration? So the partly, project? partly. Um, so if you are going to take a loan from the county that we would give through our division, you are obligated to stay affordable during the life of that loan. Okay. Um, usually that's a period of 20 years. Um, however, a lot of the projects we do fund are also receiving other funding sources, right? Um, so like from the state, and the state will often require maybe like 30 years of affordability. So it can really be anywhere from 20 to 30 years. Okay. And there are different avenues that some places can be affordable for longer than that. Um, and it just really depends on the situation and like who their primary funder is or how they're granted affordability okay. requirements. And so, you know, you have all these different agencies that are working together. So how would someone who's in the community know what type of affordable housing to look for? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's very confusing. <laughs> um, people call me all the time with the question of like, where do I start? Mm -hmm. um, and I think, education's that baseline, right? Because you don't want people spinning their wheels to look for something that they may not be income eligible for. So learning through our website, we have some basic, basic information about here's your family size, here's your income, and this is roughly what you're gonna qualify for contingent upon availability of each development, right? Um, so just through education and communication with our residents, trying to get them going in the right way because it's an overwhelming landscape. Yeah. There's a lot to learn. And so you, you said landscape, like, um, so what is the county involvement uh, with properties? So we are primarily a funder. So I can't, if someone calls me and they say, I need to find a place to live that is affordable. I'm at this income limit. Can you tell me where? I can tell them places I know are affordable, but I can't necessarily say there's a unit available for you mm -hmm. at this location. So the county's main role is really facilitating the existence of these services for our community and then collaborating with the partners and developers to make sure that these things come to fruition because everyone needs them and they are super, super important. Mm -hmm. You made reference to a map. So can you just, just elaborate yeah, and explain what actually this map is and where can people find it? So part of that overwhelming landscape comes from a past resources only giving you like a list of things and that's a great place to start but different people have different needs right mm -hmm. what the type of housing I need may be different than what you need Leonard mm -hmm. um, so we developed a map in collaboration with our GIS team um, over in IT to sort of take all the affordable developments that we know of in the county and apply some basic filters that people can start to look in the right direction. Because if I have a family of five, there's no way I can move into a one bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. So knowing where your options are are super important. Knowing what options will actually work for you are super important. So that was sort of the baseline for this map was like, we know what exists, but like, how do we get people to move toward what we know can work for them mm -hmm. in the long run? So you mentioned like family size. Are there other other kind of filters that's on this map that yeah. can help people? Yeah. So there's a lot of information in it, and I've tried not to make it <laughs> too overwhelming because yeah. you can get super granular, right? Yeah. Um, so the basic ones are 
what's the income restriction? So what's your AMI? How much are you making a year? Mm -hmm. um, how many bedrooms do you need? Do you need access to public transit? Mm -hmm. Do you have a voucher that you need to use a housing voucher from um, the housing authority that you need to use and will this place accept it? Mm -hmm. And then we also had some additions of like senior housing because that housing is exclusive to that population. Mm -hmm. So if you're 62 plus, mm -hmm. this is where you can look. And then we also have a few other things that I can't recall off the top okay. of my head, but some more like broad, like what's the baseline? Mm -hmm. Here's the population I'm in. Here's the income I'm at. Here's what I need for my family to live in a place comfortably. And will it be more just like developments or is it also like renter? In individual houses. Single yeah. home. Um, so it is strictly the multifamily developments because okay. those are things that are a little more consistent in mm -hmm. their affordability, right? And how long they stay online. Okay. So um, a great example is like you can have a land landlord who had a property that is affordable, right? Like they're renting it, say, for 600 bucks a month. They decide to sell the house and the new person buys it. Mm -hmm. And that tenant can have their rent increase two times that, oh, yeah. maybe two and a half times that. Mm -hmm. So the reliability of those are a lot different and keeping track of those and getting that information is gonna be a lot more cumbersome. Mm -hmm. So these are places we know are gonna be reliably providing affordable housing. And where can uh, listeners today find this map? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll be on our website, which is buncombecounty.org mm -hmm. forward slash affordable housing. Um, or you can just Google search Pumpkin County Affordable Housing, it will pop up. Mm -hmm. Any combinations of those words should get you there. Thank you. So, you know, when, you, when you're thinking about the map and you're like looking at our demographics, who, what folks do you think would benefit most just going to this map and um, tapping into it? Yeah, I think it's super useful for mm -hmm. anyone that needs to use it. Like, if you are in a position where you may not qualify affordable, for affordable housing, you have someone who is in need of that resource. Yeah. So I would encourage anyone to look at it because I think it can help friends, it can help families. Um, mm -hmm. Another sort of unintended consequence of it, but a very pleasant one was like, it can be a valuable tool for social workers who are working with people um, trying to find housing and they're sifting through resources and don't really know how to target target them without like calling each place. It can be, like I said, very cumbersome and very tedious to call each place and figure out mm -hmm. what's this requirement, how many bedrooms do you have at this complex. Um, so I would say really just like anyone who needs affordable housing, anyone that knows someone who needs affordable housing and social workers are probably the primary people, but like I said, I think anyone can find something useful out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so you said that um, the, the map is very easy to use. So would you like, is it, are there directions or instructions that say, hey, like walk us, can you walk us through? Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. yeah. um, what's easy for me isn't gonna be easy for everybody. Yeah. You know? Um, so we did make a video with okay, our cave team video. on a mm -hmm. YouTube video, so that's available on our website. We also have a instructional document that just goes step by step. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I would say it gets a little complicated when like access to technology is mm -hmm. limited, right? It's going to be a lot easier to do on a computer than it would be a cell phone. Yeah. Still possible on a cell phone, but what you're looking for is going to be a little more Cluster, you know, your, your screen is literally so much smaller, so the way you're looking through things is mm -hmm. a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. Is there a number, so, um, yeah, mention that, um, based off your, like, technology ability, is there a number of people can call to kind of help them with yeah. the process or in-person help? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I encourage anyone who wants to know more to always call me at my office phones. That would be 828 250 Four eight three four. Always happy to talk to people over the phone. They're also welcome to come down to our planning department. Um, and there's always some sort of affordable housing staff present in person to help anyone looking to use this tool. Um, and we're located at 46 Valley Street, so right off of the roundabout on College um, near 200 College Street. Cool. Okay, so you're right down um, by, the, by the roundabout and the. the 
Yeah. Used to be, is it still the, the Register of Deeds yes. building? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so the Register of Deeds. And we're just right down the street, right okay. down the hill from the Register of Deeds, okay. right over there. You can go and get a birth certificate and affordable housing <laughs> information. Yeah. Yeah. Pleasant conversation with me, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they can also stop by the Cape office and talk to us about things that they want to learn about in uh, Buffalo County. So um, we're, you know, we talked about the maps and, and just another question as a follow up, what with you, how has the map been received in the community? Um, do people like it? I think people were super happy that something like this exists. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, like I said before, we had a lot of organizations doing really great work in trying to organize this information into handouts, which are still super valuable. I mean, there's mm -hmm. something so tangible and, you know, very useful about having a packet that you can go through. Um, but the, be, the ability to be able to sift through things and sort of target what you need is unique and something that I think is very valuable. Um, people have been very excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's been well received. People at a housing fair that I went to a couple weeks ago, this is by the Land of Sky Association mm -hmm. of Realtors, um, had residents just cycling through with different affordable housing um, partners in our community. and. I was at my booth sort of showing people how to use the map and just general information and conversation. They're like, I have no idea this exists. This is so cool. Like, yeah. can you send this to me right now? Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, so. and that is, because you, know, you know, a lot of times we just don't know what's out there because, mm -hmm. you know, we're just not keeping up with information. And so um, are you all like, are you all planning to like do any classes or anything like that like what what is the future for the this information and maps and gathering this information about for a while yeah i mean there hasn't been a, a exclusively community development mm -hmm. affordable housing map um meeting mm -hmm. but that being said whenever we do go to community events there was one at the library this past weekend mm -hmm. we were able to attend and do the same thing so anytime we can get to our residents and show them how to make this work, um, we're gonna be there to do that. We also had a few press releases, um, so the Citizen Times and Blue Ridge Public Radio were really um, excited to talk about it. So trying to use media and also like resident focused events mm -hmm. as a way to elevate this knowledge. And so with the affordable housing map, what area does it cover? Is it the region or is it just Buncombe County? So it's just Buncombe County. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and all the townships in between, right? So Black Mountain, City of Asheville, Town of Wortham, what, whatever is around in Buncombe County is what it's going to cover. Cool. And you, you know, and, and one of the important things to look for is transportation. Everyone does not have a car. Absolutely. And the bus system does not reach all the corners. Yeah. Um, so if you're having someone who's looking in that area, and as we know that living in the city is, is very, very expensive. Um, how do you assist with someone in that situation? Yeah, so we have, so the city's big transit line would be ARG, right? Mm -hmm. And that will go out to certain parts of the county, like there's a line that runs to Black Mountain. Mm -hmm. And for those in-between spaces, there's um, Mount Mobility that mm -hmm. is housed in our division. So we try to lay both of those transit lines onto that map so people know okay, Mount, Mount Mobility is going to come up this way and can provide transportation. Art's coming up this way and they're going to provide transportation. So again, just trying to make sure that the information can be as clear as possible and just putting it in front of each place and sort of saying like, this is the route that will come to you. And then they can obviously reach out to someone at Art or mm -hmm. even in our team from Mount Mobility to figure out like, what's the schedule? How can I schedule a ride? Mm -hmm. So I had another question. I know from earlier on we talked about with the county being like a funder, mm -hmm. and we mentioned uh, some of the funding going to developers. What's some of the individual resources for um, residents in Buckingham County that the affordable under the affordable housing that's available to them? Yeah, um, I would encourage residents to go to our website. We have a lot of funded partners mm -hmm. there, and also funders we, funders we have funded in the past, but providers we have funded in the past. <laughs> excuse me. Um, 
but maybe not in this grant cycle. Mm -hmm. um, those like most direct services are going to be things like um, our emergency repair programs in the county. Mm -hmm. um, so organizations like Hood Air, Hood Air Emma provide those, Habitat for Humanity provides those, <coughs> Mountain Housing Opportunities provide those, and a lot of those really center around like making sure someone can stay, stay, stay safely in a home. Um, if they are aging in their home, do they need a ramp instead of these steep stairs to get up to their home? Mm -hmm. Do they have a hole in their floor that needs to be patched because that is a safety hazard? Mm -hmm. Is there a hole in the roof that needs to be fixed? Um, and then we also do rental assistance programs as well, which is, I think, another very direct um, partnership. Um, if someone needs first month's rent or maybe they need some rental arrears to prevent eviction, mm -hmm. um, they can reach out to organizations like Evelyn Charities, or the Arc of Buncombe County. And you know, that each organization has a different focus, right? Mm -hmm. So the Arc of Buncombe County, you know, serves primarily or exclusively families with a child or a family member with an intellectual or developmental disability. Mm -hmm. Whereas suppose Evelyn Charities is providing rental assistance in a more um, broad, broad population, mm -hmm. right? So those are some of the programs I would highly suggest to go to our website and we have a renters resources page, a homeowners resources page, and if someone goes there and like, I really need some resources for down payment assistance, we can get them going in the right direction. Okay. What heating, I know it's kind of getting into the winter months, is that considered under affordable housing or is that more? That, that could definitely be a, um, a activity that is undertaken. Um, mm -hmm. Our emergency repair Providers do fix HVAC systems sometimes. Okay. Um, one of the bigger organizations that do that does deal with that around here are community action opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, they deal with weatherization, so that could be things like providing more insulation for the house or like really creative methods for like heating and cooling in the winter months. Yeah. Um, so so I would highly encourage people to check them out. And so with that, like if, like if say if someone does have a higher income, but they have a medical debt as well, but they need these repairs. Um, is there a way for them to get those things done? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, so state statutes really limit what the county can mm -hmm. do with affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So any general fund dollars that we are getting for affordable housing needs to stay below that 80% AMI threshold. Okay. Um, and once you go above that, it gets, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, it gets a little dicey though. Um, you can help in some ways, especially with development, like maybe we have some zoning incentives for people to provide housing for above 80% AMI, but you can't give a direct dollar to say you're gonna help someone above this income threshold. Um, as you know, a lot of folks say they always just like, I want yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, and that happens, and like if there's anything that can um, help them, and we do know um, the cold snap did come. Oh yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I, I pulled out my sweaters, <laughs> and so um, this fits in there that a lot of our, our especially our elders, mm -hmm. um, you know, they have their heat on all year long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's good to know that that um, um, a community opportunity still offers that help and Habitat for Humanity and mm -hmm. all those things. Evelyn as well. And Evelyn as well. Evelyn has been around for a long time and they have really um, helped our community um, in such times. And it's nice to know that Buncombe County, that we also have our hand in that as well and trying to make sure that our, our folks are getting the things they need. So what are some other things that we've missed that you think is very important for us to know? Um, there's a lot, but I will say, <laughs> well, there's affordable housing is such an endless topic, right? Because yeah. like, what is it affordable? Touch, exactly. And it touches everyone in some way. Um, I would say that, you know, the map is super valuable. There's a lot of information on there. You can print a list to learn, like, will this place take my pet? You know, how mm -hmm. people in this area love their pets mm -hmm. and won't move without them. Yeah. Um, like what amenities are available because affordable housing isn't just a brick tower with units right it's a home yeah. so like is there 
inter is there like an internet cafe that I can use technology at? Mm -hmm. um, so all of this information is tucked in there and you can print it all out and have it in your hands to really know what you're getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so are there, are there services for folks who have pets like if they can't take the pet with them because that's scary it is um you know in the affordable housing realm i don't know if there's a program exclusively for that um, i will say like when you look at a continuum of affordable housing mm -hmm. you're also looking at people experiencing a lack of home a lack of housing and homelessness yeah. and they may still have their pet and that can also be a barrier to them getting just shelter for the night yeah um, but there are sh um, animal shelters that will take those pets in overnight or during the duration of someone's stay yeah. somewhere to mm -hmm. alleviate that burden and make sure someone can get into a place um, i think brother wolf does it I'm sure that our Humane Society, our local Humane Society, would help with that. Mm -hmm. um, so another question around, I know we have the Asheville Housing Authority as well, so is that something um, in partnership with the county, or is that something totally different in terms of the affordable housing kind of yeah. um, ecosystem? <laughs> it's completely separate, but it's very confusing, right, yeah. because it's the Asheville Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. So the Housing Authority is a body separate from the county and separate from the city. Mm -hmm. I think the only connection with the housing authority is that the mayor of Asheville may appoint some board members okay. to the housing authority, but they're primarily federally funded. Um, they use vouchers and all those vouchers are provided by the federal government. Okay. What I will say is they don't exist in a silo, right? There's always local collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, so as we've seen with Maple Crest, where they take an older development and they breathe new life into it and make it look amazing. Mm -hmm. like, Maple Crest looks amazing now. Mm -hmm. um, we do collaborate with them on those projects. Um, so this past grant cycle, they were awarded a low interest loan for the Reimagining Beaver View project. Okay. So we do collaborate and we're all players in this affordable housing yeah. ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it this is where like the whole affordable housing thing gets real sticky. It's like mm -hmm. this organi organization's doing this thing, this organization's doing this thing, but they'll they'll meet on this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it gets really, really confusing, especially for people who don't understand like how any of this works. Mm -hmm. Like they'll they'll call the county and they're like, you know, I would like to get a Section 8 voucher. And I'm yeah. like, unfortunately, I am not the right person to talk to. If I could sign you up, I definitely would. And then you have to reorient them, recenter them, and get them going in the right direction. Okay, that makes yeah. sense. So we're almost out of time, but I want to give you a moment to share anything that you think that it is so important that you have to say it to our audience. Yeah, I would just like to thank you guys for having me. Mm -hmm. I would encourage anyone curious to learn about affordable housing language or resources to visit our website at buckhamcounty.org forward slash affordable housing. And just really encourage anyone that has any affordable housing question to reach out to us and we'll do our best to really get everybody oriented and get them going the right way. Yeah. And I'd just like to echo a lot that Jake had mentioned today. And we enjoyed you being here today. As we say, you often hear affordable housing is that kind of buzzword we hear a lot of times, and it is that question, what is affordable housing? But thanks for coming for sharing some of the clarification around that to help many of our listeners. And I echo the same thing. You can always go out to buncombecounty.org forward slash affordable housing um, to find out more information and also to see the map that uh, we have been discussing that it kind of give you some resources or tools. Um, and if you want to reach my telephone number um, in the planning department around affordable housing, that number is 828-250-4834. And also, if you're looking to come in person, the office is located at 46 Valley Street, and it's downtown, um, right off of the roundabout by the register of deeds. You can come in person, call by phone, or just um, do some research on your own on the website. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all for having me. Well, thank you so much. And, and you know, I always wrap it up. And, you know, as we, we talk and the holidays are coming up and, and all those things, you know, you hear a lot of words about home and, fi and finding home and home being where your heart is. And, you know, 
we have a huge situation in, in Buffington County around homelessness and, and things of that nature. And affordable housing is a hot topic. It is one of the number one topics. It's brought up every meeting, every time, <laughs> yes. you know, any discussion, you know, that and um, health insurance. Those things are always yeah. brought up. <laughs> and so um, with that being said, you know, sometimes we don't know because we haven't asked. And sometimes we haven't asked because we're scared. But fear does not stop what's going to happen. So I need all of you all, if you're facing a situation, please be in contact with um, Buffalo County um, 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 Grants de um, Department and things. And please talk to them, ask the questions, look at the map, review the information, because information keeps you aware of what's going on. Just because you close your eyes doesn't mean that the sun is not going to come up or the day is not going to continue. Those things are still going to move. So we're encouraging everyone to make sure that they are getting in contact with their, their staying in contact, even with their landlord, even when those conversations are hard or difficult. Um, and any information you find out that um, is helpful for you, share with your landlord and so that they can also um, be a light to other residents in their um, complexes or um, housing communities. Um, again, uh, we'd like to thank um, Jane for coming and we hope that you come back with more information and we would like to invite you out to some other county um, events as well. Happy and, to have done. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think it'd be great because you know we want our community to know because as I say all the time, we are one Buffalo and we are stronger when we're together. Um, Randy, where are you? Randy, do we leave, lose you? I think he's finishing his pork chops. <laughs> <laughs> Randy? Hello? I don't know where he's gone. Um, well, that is um, the wrapping up of our show. Um, and hopefully, we'll have you back. And to all those who have heard our voice, you have been tapped in. And I'm Zakia Bell Rogers. And I'm Leonard Jones. And until next time, take care. Thank you for listening to Tap Dan, Buncombe County's half hour to empower, here on WRES 100.7 FM in Nashville. Learn more about today's topics at buncombecounty.org. Otherwise, stay tuned for more great episodes coming up. <laughs>